come back and forth. You can always, you know, uh, uh, go like oh, cool. Cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Sick, man. Testing. Oh, that's really good. Sick. That's easy. <laughs> well, to continue where we were, uh, and for anybody who's new and wasn't able to hear me before, my name is Mark Emery, and some people call me the Prince of Pot, and I have been, and it's important to know this too, in a little while, and I'm the leader of the BC Marijuana Party. You know, we did history here in 2001. I'm the uh, largest contributor to the political process here in British Columbia, in the history of British Columbia. In 2001, I gave $152,000 towards our election campaign in 2001, where we had 79 candidates for the BC Marijuana Party, and for a new party, we did a record 3.5% of the vote, which was pretty phenomenal. And uh, I, today, remain the largest contributor. And you know what? All that money was donated by people from the cannabis culture, because that was all that seed money. That's what I said I would do with it. I collected $4 million, and we gave it away. We gave it away to pay for the Canadian Supreme Court challenge in December 2003 that David Mamo Levine was a, a testifier for and a litigant. We, we've spent money, $35,000 every year we spend on the Global Marijuana March all around the world to buy, buy posters and, and have these rallies put on. That money that people in the cannabis culture gave me and sent to me for seeds was used for class action suits against the U.S. federal government, was used for Supreme Court talent chases, Cases. It was used to pay for political parties in Israel, in New Zealand, in Australia, in Canada, in the United States. It was doing fabulous work, and make no mistake about it, that's why I'm being sent away to the United States U.S. federal penitentiary system because of all those great works that we were able to do. Remember in 1990, we had books and magazines about marijuana banned. There were no head stores left in the country. The police had all put them out of business. The laws had become draconian. And slowly but surely over the last 20 years, by, by hard work of our movement and by getting the rallies and by doing things, we've made medical marijuana legal thanks to people who went to court to challenge the government. And we helped pay for a lot of those court cases. And thanks to people who wanted to see industrial hemp happen, we've got hemp cereals in our stores now, we've got hemp clothing in our stores. Heck, you can even buy the latest BMW, and hemp is used to make the car doors and the chassis on the new hemp BMWs that are out there. Marijuana is taking over the world just not as quickly as I wanted to, because when I came up with this overgrow the government revolution in 1990, I realized that we did not have a movement, we didn't have any money, nobody was speaking on our behalf. And yet, we still now, when I started in 1990, only 24% of Canadians wanted to legalize marijuana, and now 52% want to legalize marijuana. 65% of people in British Columbia want to legalize marijuana, and I have to reiterate, we still do not have a member of the legislature getting up and saying, Mr. Speaker, in regards to the 65% of British Columbians that want to see marijuana legalized so we can end the gang violence, so we can end this gang problem that we have in British Columbia, so that we can return some civility to our streets, you never hear, you never hear anybody get up and say that in front of the Speaker of the House, even though two-thirds of British Columbians are smart enough and are aware enough to know that our social problems regarding murder and gang violence would be so immediately dealt with immediately by ending the marijuana prohibition. And we don't have anybody in the federal parliament get up and say, Mr. Speaker, in regards to the fact that 52% of Canadians and 65% of British Columbians want to legalize marijuana, why don't we have a vote in the House on repealing marijuana prohibition? Instead, what we get is Bill C-15, put forward by the Conservative Party, supported in the House of Commons by the Liberal Party, and what it does is it's going to do terrible things to you. People growing marijuana with their kids in the house are going to get a mandatory minimum year in jail. People who grow marijuana in a house they're renting get a mandatory nine months in jail. If you grow it in your own house, the government is going to seize your house and your property as proceeds of crime. So believe me, this bill ratchets up. If you're a young person, 19 years old, and you share a joint with a 17-year-old, you could be liable for enhanced penalties and go to jail. If you sell marijuana anywhere near a school, a kilometer, heck, everywhere is a, is a school of some kind, a kilometer within a kilometer, well, that's a mandatory six months minimum in jail, too. So we are going to fill up the jails unless we stop this bill. That's even more important than bringing me back. Because I'm one person and I like to think that I've done my, paid my dues and that you have a high regard for me. But I'm still just one person. We can save thousands of people if this week coming up. We call our senators. We do have senators in Canada. The Senate of Canada is going to review this bill, Bill C-15. It's already passed the House of Commons. And you've got to call your senator. Go to whyprohibition.ca. 
and there are form letters right there where you can send to your senator to indicate you've got to stop Bill C-15. And research that bill. You can see everything like that on whyprohibition.ca or Cannabis Culture Magazine. I'm going to go to jail in the United States federal system for five years, and it's in an alien jail too. I call it the District 9 of the U.S. criminal justice system because as, as a non-American, I don't get the privileges and the rights that they get. I don't get anything like that. I'll be put in a jail with Mexicans, Guatemalans, Hondurans, Central Americans, and other people, including many people from violent cartels, from crime gangs, from extortion gangs. They're all gonna be in my little prison with me and nine other Canadians. So I will definitely be having a rotten time, although I'll try and make the best of it. I'm gonna learn Spanish and French, write up my memoirs, try and, try and stay out of trouble and try and keep in contact with people back here. Oi. If you want to write to me in jail, there'll be a, my address posted on the front page of CannabisCulture.com. And if you want to know who to write to to get me transferred back to Canada, because it's really important, once I get transferred back to Canada, Canadian sentencing principles apply, and I could be out on, in, on day parole in 10 months and full parole in 20 months. If I'm stuck in the U.S. system, I'll be there for four and a half years minimum. There's no parole possibilities there, especially not for an alien, as they call me. So it'll be a very rough time, and so what I want you to do is do what I did. Do what I did. Is I want you, I was one person, 20, 20 years ago I was thinking, how can I start a revolution? Man, it's really bad in this country, I was thinking, we don't have any books or magazines, they're all banned, we don't have any head shops, we don't have any head store, hemp stores, I mean nothing was in this country, no rallies, there wasn't a single rally held in the 1980s anywhere in Canada that I can find any information of. And yet, in 1973, the government said they were going to legalize marijuana. The Ladane Commission said, we're going to legalize marijuana. All that progress in the 1970s disappeared and went backwards in the 1980s. So you can't let things slide. If I'm gone and I come back and Bill C-15 has been passed and things have gotten worse, I'm going to feel so sad because I'm going to see so many people that are here today won't be here today. You'll be in jail. And that will be bad. Are you going to do something about Bill C-15? Come on, let me hear it. Are you going to write those senators on Monday? Come on, you better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you said no. Hell yeah. All right, Hell okay. yeah. Absolutely. Stop Bill C-15 is the best thing you could do in your whole life. And right now, that bill is so dangerous, and the press hasn't been doing their job. They haven't been telling people. They, that's right, go to whyprohibition.ca. The press hasn't been telling people how bad this is going to be for young people aged 17 to 25. It's going to be terrible. It's all aimed at targeting them. And remember, the people who hate it, just got to ask yourself, what has the benefit been to the general public, the Canadian citizen, for the billions, the tens of billions of dollars that have been spent on prohibition? What's the benefit to the public of two million Canadians being criminalized in the last 45 years? We've had three generations of war on drugs in this country, and what can we show for it that's good? There's not a single thing to show for it that's good. We've got filled prisons. We've got empty treasuries. Every government.